Hi, this is Greg Benz with another Luminosity Masking Tutorial for Photoshop. In this demo, I want to show you how you can take a drab sunset image like this and turn it into this finished image you see here. So to begin, first, I brought this image into Photoshop as a smart object and did my camera raw adjustments here. So we can see these are the different adjustments I made. Everything was in this panel. Basically, the original image looked like this straight out of the camera. So here is the original image, no adjustments on it at all, not a lot of attention on the key structures in the image, no real color in the sky, and the buildings are pretty dark and silhouetted as compared to the background sky. So even though that's some of the most interesting detail in the image, it's just really kind of dark and drab. So a lot of things we want to do to this image. Um, the yellow sunset looks great, so we want to make sure we sort of maintain that as we go, but otherwise a lot of work to be done here. So. The adjustments I made were to uh, bring up the exposure while bringing down the highlights uh, and bring up the blacks a bit just to get the overall tonal balance correct in the image, punched up the clarity and enhanced vibrance and saturation. So you can just again see going from the original, here are the uh, camera raw adjustments. So we'll just say okay to that. And that brought that in. And I do like to load these as smart objects. It just gives me the ability to go back and make changes if I decide later that perhaps I want to you know, add more or less contrast or clarity or something like that. Uh, and then I made several additional adjustments in here. I'll just briefly touch on what I did here because I want to focus on the final step on how to get the pink sky out. But so in Lumenzia, I did a, a couple things. First was to add a, another exposure here. In this case, it's the same image as the, the base raw here, but I just increased the exposure. You can see the thumbnail is much, much brighter and then used a luminosity mask to blend it in. The, the mask looks like this. So you can see that I basically selected shadow areas in a couple parts of the image. And when I turn that on and off, you can see that I've punched up the shadow areas, the bridge, and a lot of work here on these uh, green trees and this building by bringing this in. Now, you might be wondering, well, why not adjust the camera raw filters, either the, um, the black setting or the shadows and just simply brush that detail in. And I, I could do that. It wouldn't be as precise and more importantly, it might be a little bit flat versus using a completely separate image here. I can get the tonal uh, values I want, the contrast that I want in this image and then blend it into the original. So I'm basically using the raw processing to get two good global adjustments. One that's kind of the overall image and the other that's optimized for a couple shadow areas and then just bring in the best of those two adjustments, which ultimately lets me uh, focus the camera raw on what it does best, and then you know bring that back for two different scenarios and, and combine those. So that's a, a common technique that I use when I manually blend two exposures. In this case, it's the same exposure, just uh, adjusted, but same, uh, same concept. Uh, next up, made some adjustments to the sun, and if we look in the background here, it's a little bit kind of blown out uh, some of the yellow is gone, so I just simply added a curves adjustment through a luminosity mask. It's very, very subtle. You may not even really notice it here online, but wanted to bring back more of that original color and just make it a more even yellow in the background. Uh, next up, wanted to add a little bit of pop to these buildings here, so did some dodging and burning through a luminosity mask, and we can see kind of before and after here. So those buildings just have a lot more pop and detail with the dodging and burning. And then lastly, I wanted to vignette the image and just bring the attention to the, the center of the image. And this is a, a compound mask I created in Lumenzia. It basically is a, um, a vignette around this area, but I combined that with uh, basically uh, what I'd call a not D4 mask, or kind of the inverted shadows. It just kind of protects in these shadow areas. We don't want to necessarily vignette the detailed shadows of the bridge and the water because that would ultimately blow out some of the details. So that's just protecting those shadows in the vignetted areas. So a couple of just quick adjustments that I made to the image there. Um, but I want to focus now on what I did in the sky here, because I wanted to add more pink in person. It was a really vibrant sunset. But even after some of the adjustments here, there's not nearly as much color as I remember in the image. And so what I want to do now is use a solid fill layer to essentially kind of dodge in color to the sky, bring back more of that original color. And I'll show two different ways of doing it. The first is with just my free luminosity masking actions. You can get this off my website. 
basically what this will do is by default you wouldn't have any channels in your channels palette but you simply hit create masks and it's going to create a series of channels for you so when I go over to the channels palette I can now see a whole bunch of different luminosity masks that I can load up and what I want to look for is something that nicely selects the sky but really does not select the building so I can selectively paint pink into the sky and if we just start drilling through the lights we can see that Lights 2 is kind of close, but the buildings have a lot of detail. Lights 3 looks really good. The sky is pretty well selected, especially the brightest areas that should be pink. And the buildings are pretty dark, so they're not going to be adjusted. If I go down to Lights 4, the sky is not that well selected. So really, Lights 3 is what we're going to want to use. And we'll come back to this in a second. But first, let's load up on this a uh, solid fill adjustment layer. So I want to be, sorry, click on the RGB so I can see the image and just go click on solid fill for this new adjustment layer and by default it's giving me this black I'm going to just simply say OK and hide it because I want to look at the original image and pick a color so by double clicking on this now that this layer is invisible it's not going to adjust anything and I can simply click on areas of color that I want to use so if I click on the sky here I'm getting this kind of weak pink in the sky and I can just simply push it up to the max and I can see that around a value of about 320 with 100% saturation and brightness, I get this vibrant pink. And obviously, I don't want this guy to be this extreme, but that's the direction I want it to head. So I'm going to use a more extreme value here, and then it'll automatically get dialed back in this layer. So I say OK, and we turn this on. It's just covering the entire image with pink. And what we need to do here is change the blend mode from normal down to one of these other adjustment uh, options here, or one of these other blending options. The one that I use is soft light. Um, this is the same thing you can use for dodging and burning. Basically a soft light is going to blend the color in with the underlying image. You could also, if you wanted to, go down to the color blend mode and use it to replace color, which I would do if I was trying to make a blue part of the sky more orange or pink or something like that, but it does tend to wipe out quite a bit of the original color. I just want to enhance the color, so I'm going to choose soft light. And now the entire image has been washed in pink. So obviously that's not the adjustment I want, but we can see that the pink in the sky is probably pretty good. We just need to control it to the right areas of the, the image. So I'm going to invert my mask here. Just clicking uh, Command or Control I gives me a black mask, hides this adjustment. We just need now to paint it back into the right areas, and that's where the luminosity mask is going to come in. So I'm going to go over to my Lights 3 mask and just Control or Command click on that. You can see the marching ants has loaded that as a selection. And we will simply go back, click on the mask. We're going to paint on it by using the paintbrush. And I've got that set to white paint. So because you see these marching ants, we know that we have the selection loaded, but I'm going to click Command H, which is going to hide the selection. So it's still active, you just can't see the marching ants. But anything I do right now is going to be restricted through that Lights 3 mask. So when I paint, it will only paint in the light areas that were um, the lighter parts of the image per that mask. So I'm just going to simply start painting in here. We can already see there's a good bit of color coming back in. Pretty important when you do this to use a soft edge brush. I've got it at a 10% flow, um, which I think works pretty well. I might work as low as 1% sometimes, sometimes as high as about 20%, but you don't want all the paint to just kind of come flying out. That's going to typically be a recipe for over adjusting the sky. And so by painting through that mask, what we've done is created this complex you know, essentially the darks three in this central part of the image with a bit of a kind of feather around it. And I can even look at the the mask while I'm painting that if I want to here. So I'm going to keep painting in, get more of the sky. Um, obviously, I don't want to paint down here. I could, but if I do that, I'm going to undo that. Uh, that would be applying pink into these other parts of the image. So I'm just getting it where I need it. Now we can see a couple areas of the buildings that have been uh, adjusted. Uh, these really won't matter, but I'm just going to show you. You can you know, revert back to the black paint and just kind of knock those out. So if you if you do get things in the wrong area, you can kind of wipe that out. Or if you wanted to have a little bit less in certain areas, you can kind of just do a quick 
touch-ups, and maybe I don't want as much paint showing through these areas. But so I'm going to alt-click this mask again. So we're looking at the, uh, the image, and just looking at before and after, we can see just by applying this pink through the soft light blend mode to these selected parts of the image that were defined by painting through a light three mask, we were able to add a lot of pink to the sky. It looks a lot better. Now, I would probably just take this as is. I think it looks great. But if you wanted to punch up the sky even more, you may be wondering, well, how do I do that if I you know, paint this mask all the way to the, the brightest possible values and I'm still not getting enough color? Very simple. Just duplicate the layer. So if you hit Command or Control J, you'll get a copy of the layer, and you can see that every time you add a copy, you're boosting that overall color. And that's a very simple way of doing it. Now, by duplicating the mask, um, you are adding more file space. So an alternative option, I'm just going to delete this, is instead, that didn't work. Let's try that again. Instead, we can group this. So I'm just going to hit Command G, or you could just click on this file folder down here. Uh, and I get a group, and now if I just simply drag the mask up to the group, it's going to have the same effect on the image, but when I go and now hit Command-J to duplicate this color fill, I get the boosted color, but I'm just using a single mask. So I could add multiple copies of this if I wanted to really make it strong. I have the mask controlling it here, and now I could just simply take the master opacity and just dial this down until the sky looks the way I want, and so that looks pretty good. So that was the uh, before and after on the sky there. So that was how you may make this adjustment using uh, just my free actions and uh, you know kind of traditional luminosity masks. I'm going to first uh, clean up the masks. So by doing that I got rid of those additional channels and I'm just going to delete what we did on top here. So now I'll just show you the workflow that I'd use with Lamente, which is essentially my, my speed workflow panel for doing the luminosity masking work. So with Lumenzia, I need to just simply tell it that I want to work on the sky in the lighter areas. So what I can do is quickly select the sky. I'm going to use the quick selection tool. And with that, we can just simply click and drag across the sky. And Photoshop is going to make a quick selection of the sky with that. Takes just a second, it's gonna find all the edges. And these would be kind of rough edges, but Lomenzi will take care of the, the feathering. So we'll just leave that selection and now click on the Lights 3 preset. And what this is effectively telling Lomenzia is within kind of a roughly this selected area up top here, use this black and white mask you see here, this lights mask. And now we can simply apply it to the color adjustment layer. We'll load this up here automatically with the luminosity mask on it, and I can just pick the color I want. So I can go and click, and we're kind of seeing the same tonal values we saw before. Uh, we used 320 before, so I'm just going to use that again, and then just punch this up in the top right corner here so we see 100%, 100%. If you don't see the same layout here, clicking on these different options is what's determining this. So I have this set to hue, and with that I can drag up to the top right to get 100% saturation and brightness with the 320, so I'll say OK. And with that, we've already done the full adjustment. So this is the soft light pink layer on this luminosity mask that's applied to the sky areas here. And if I wanted to make some manual refinements, I could again load up my paintbrush with black paint. I could paint this out. So just like we did before, you might choose to make some quick refinements to the mask. Probably not necessary here, but you could if you wanted to. Uh, and just like we did before, if you want to increase this effect, just hit Command J to duplicate it or start grouping it and duplicating within the, the group. So let's uh, let's actually do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and group this and we will duplicate this and throttle back the overall adjustment just a little bit here. So just kind of overall coming from the original adjusted raw here, we added a few steps in Lumenzia, and then finally using some uh, you know, Lumenzia or luminosity masking, uh, added these pink soft light blend layers through a luminosity mask to the upper sky in the image here to get this pink adjustment. So I find that to be a really nice, simple way to um, you know, quickly make these uh, adjustments. And that's what I typically do when I've got a, a washed out sky. I'll just simply 
click select the sky, pick the appropriate lights mask, click on the, the color button in Mementia, and just pick the color I want. And that's just a really nice, quick way to punch up the sky. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, please uh, check out my, my newsletter and website and YouTube channels for more tutorials on luminosity masking.